Right. So last time we talked about plasma. Today we're going to talk about red blood cells or erythrocytes. So these um disc shaped um cells with a diameter of seven point five micrometers and a thickness of two micrometers. So they are made in the bone marrow and their main function is to carry hemoglobin. They have uh, a hemoglobin average content of 29 mean corpuscular hemoglobin and in circulation they are around 3 times 10 to the power of 18 red blood cells for every 900 grams of hemoglobin. They have an average lifespan of 120 days after which they are broken down by tissue macrophages either into um, biopigments in stool that is their byproducts or they are reuptaken in the body into iron and amino acids which are then recycled into red blood cells right uh, so we see that average uh, red blood cell count in the blood is uh, 5.4 times 10 power of 6 cells per microliter in males and 4.8 times 10 power of 6 cells in females. Uh, this is because uh, males have a high level of testosterone and androgen which is necessary for the production of red blood cells. Uh, we also see that uh, the amount of red blood cell count can be expressed as a hematocrit. So what is hematocrit? Hematocrit is basically the measure of um, pegged cell, red blood cell volume relative to whole blood. So how do we measure this hematocrit? Firstly, we centrifuge our um, red blood cell our blood extract after which we put it in a, a specialized tube right which has graduations from 0 to 10 centimeters right called a wind trope so this wind trope it separates our blood into hematocrit uh, buffy coat and plasma layer so what is the significance of hematocrit? Hematocrit is um, significant um, for the reason that it helps in the prognosis of diseases like anemia and polycythemia. We shall explain more on anemia and polycythemia in the upcoming videos. But basically uh, in anemia hematocrit is low since there are fewer number of circulating red blood cells whereas in polycythemia the number of red blood cells is high and the hematocrit is abnormally high under prognosis or prediction of d diseases we see that um, smokers and patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease have high hematocrit this is due to chronic hypoxia or this is due to uh, low levels of oxygen circulating in the blood. So this is the mathematical mathematical formula of hematocrit. It's length of picked red blood cells times 100 over the length of total cells in plasma. So this or these are the normal ranges in which we expect one to have hematocrit after which uh, they will have uh, these conditions if they are not in these normal ranges that is 40 to 54 percent in males and 36 to 48 percent in females right so an increase in hematocrit may increase blood viscosity that is blood thickness as the amount of pegged red blood cells will be high and it also increases um, the total peripheral resistance and hence may increase 
blood pressure right as there are more red blood cells flowing per unit volume that's why we might have an increased blood pressure and it might lead to stroke so the knowledge of hematocrit is essential in blood physiology since it helps in the prognosis of diseases okay then hemoglobin this is just the red pigment which carries oxygen in blood uh, it is a molecular weight of 64 kilodalton and it's a globular plot protein that is made up of four subunits that is two beta chains and two alpha chains so each subunit has a heme uh, group which is con conjugated to a polypeptide chain as you can see here the polypeptide is referred to as the globin portion of the molecule and each hemoglobin is made up of two pairs of the peptide right two alpha and two beta and this is the um, chemical formula of a hemoglobin right so uh, in adults uh, their normal hemoglobin is known as hemoglobin a1 so hemoglobin a1 is this one which contains two alpha chains and two beta chains about however about 2.5 percent of hemoglobin in adults is a2 where the beta chains are replaced with the delta chains that is these chains are replaced with the delta chains so patients with diabetes have glycated hemoglobin right known as hemoglobin a1 we shall talk more on diabetes in the upcoming videos uh, and uh, there's a difference between adult hemoglobin and that which is found in fetuses so fetal hemoglobin has two alpha chains and two gamma chains unlike adult hemoglobin so this makes fetal hemoglobin bind oxygen more strongly than adult hemoglobin at any given oxygen partial pressure so fetal hemoglobin has a higher affinity of oxygen than adult hemoglobin as we can see here in this sigmoid curve fetal hemoglobin has has a higher affinity for oxygen due to the presence of gamma chains instead of um, beta chains right so what is the function of hemoglobin hemoglobin uh, it serves to transport oxygen from the lungs to peripheral tissue so as we said each heme group has um, uh, each hemoglobin has two chains two beta and two alpha that is a generic hemoglobin and each heme group that is this portion has uh, forms an unstable reversible bond with an oxygen molecule right and each hemoglobin can bind up to four oxygen molecules that is each oxygen binds to a heme group heme group heme group heme group making a total of four so the binding of the first oxygen molecule is difficult uh, since the hemoglobin will not have been familiar to it so the first uh, action will be difficult but the second and third will be easy since there will now be a cooperative binding of oxygen right since there will be a conformational change which is more recep receptive to the binding of oxygen right so we see that our uh, oxygen its main function is transporting uh, hemoglobin in red blood cells its main function is to carry oxygen from the lungs to organs inside the body and up back again and back again to the lungs so that's basically all i have for today so in the next video we're going to talk more
more about blood and um, we're going to talk about the process in which red blood cells are produced thank you